up with Peter and see any way that anyone in the hall can practically help him on this very important work. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is the former chair of the Stop the War Coalition, who gave way to an older man, that's me, and um, was the founder chair of it, and also chief of staff at Unite and a member of the TUC General Council, who was instrumental in getting that crucial TUC Congress vote through, not just against the wars, but also to formally support the Stop the War Coalition. Please can you give a very warm welcome to Andrew Murray. It's a pleasure to be here. We're meeting in the middle of a sort of season of anniversaries. Uh, earlier this year, we marked the 10th anniversary of both the Iraq War and of the immense worldwide demonstrations uh, against it. Uh, it's hardly necessary to dwell on the fact as to how right those who marched were in every particular. Indeed, our only mistake was probably in underestimating the scale of a calamity about to unfold. Now, in the aftermath of the beginning of that war 10 years ago, Stop the War Coalition set itself three broad uh, objectives to carry the movement forward. The first was to campaign to end the occupation uh, of Iraq, and that, uh, of course, has been done. Uh, British troops are long gone. Of course, it's happened too late, after too much suffering, too much bloodshed, after Iraq uh, was broken. Uh, but nevertheless, the British troops are out of Iraq, and if all goes according to plan, they'll be out of Afghanistan in a year's time after a war and an occupation no less disastrous there. Secondly, we said no more war, and often in particular, don't attack Iran for the reasons that Jeremy has already touched on in opening this conference. Uh, today, it seems that a war on uh, Iran uh, is less likely than it's been at any time uh, in those 10 years, or at least a war with British participation is certainly uh, less likely. Yes, we had the calamitous attack on Libya, uh, which has uh, confounded all the uh, expectations of those uh, who waged it and has left Libya uh, a desolate and ruined state. But we have, as Diane explained earlier, and as we all know, had a signal victory in uh, stopping the potential aggression against uh, Syria that Obama and Cameron and Hollande were mooting earlier on this year. Uh, a signal victory for the worldwide anti-war movement. So yes, we can say that we have raised the bar for our politicians taking us into criminal wars of aggression that much higher. Thirdly, we said we wanted to hold those responsible for the 2003 uh, aggression to uh, account. Uh, Peter's just spoken about what increasingly looks like the farcical proceedings uh, at the Chilcot Inquiry, but Tony Blair was driven from office earlier, uh, is now excoriated. Yes, of course, he should be going to The Hague to answer war crime trials. <laughs> facility only extended to people from Africa, uh, it would uh, appear. So we can't say that Tony Blair and the others, George Bush, have had uh, the accounting that they deserve yet, but we can say that broadly uh, our uh, elite is much more aware of popular pressure and the need to tread carefully uh, in proceeding uh, to war. Now we're now in a different and a fast-changing situation. I don't pretend that I or probably any of us can sum up neatly the new international situation that's emerging. The crisis in the special relationship, uh, which uh, was all over the papers for about two or three days until they all decided perhaps we better stop talking about this, but it is there, this rupture between Britain and the USA for the first time on an international issue of magnitude for 50 or 60 uh, years. The changing situation uh, in the Middle East where uh, Obama's uh, diplomacy, a diplomacy that proceeds in parallel of course with criminal drone strikes around the globe, uh, has clearly alienated uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia, two of the other pillars of reaction uh, in the region. There too is uh, in flux. But if much is changing, there is one thing 
that we don't need to expect to change, and that is the fact that imperialism leads to war. And often in the last uh, 12 years of Stop the War Coalition, we have had to warn that the wars we are seeing, dreadful, brutal, and criminal as they are, wars of a broadly a neo-colonial type, have often in the past merely been the foothills, the way station to much larger and more cataclysmic wars. Is that an out-of-date position? I don't think so. If we look at what is happening in the Far East, where parallel to the war on terror, the United States has uh, consistently been trying to uh, encircle and put pressure on China, where Obama has announced a pivot to Asia, moving more of America's military hardware, Navy, missiles and so on, to the Pacific to fight for control of a region where uh, most of the world's people are to be found and many of its uh, resources tensions arising with a new militaristic posturing by uh, Japan and of course China responding recently by extending its airspace. There is a real danger that we are drifting towards uh, another huge war of a different type to the ones we have marched and mobilized uh, against. And next year, the next anniversary, 100 years since the start of the first great imperialist war, is it beyond possibility that imperialism will mark that centenary by starting a third world war? It would be good to say, no, that is impossible, that would be grotesque beyond imagining, but that would be to misunderstand the nature of the enemy we have to fight against. So we have new challenges coming up alongside an element of unfinished business, but we can take, of course, some satisfaction that so much of what we have done over the last 12 years in Stop the War Coalition has made a difference and has achieved measurable political gains, counted most recently in lives saved in Syria uh, from a bombardment, a missile bombardment that we helped stop happen. How do we build our movement going forward to meet these new challenges? There is no simple answer uh, to that. We will need our alliances with brave people like Joan uh, and Peter and the military families against the war. We will need to unite people uh, of all faiths and a diversity of politics and political positions as we have done in the past. We will need our connections with trade unions. We will need to work closely with our brothers and sisters in the United States in particular. We will need to do all of that to stop this new drift to still more dangerous conflicts uh, around the world rooted in the desire of imperialism in America, in the United States elite in particular, uh, to dominate the globe. We can do it. That is the thing we can take away from our struggles of the last 12 years in Stop the War Coalition and around the world. Ordinary people mobilise in their millions can make a difference and we need to do that. In short, to make sure that we can take international politics by the throat and take it away from the grip of that bankrupt global elite which have disgraced themselves so comprehensively over the last 12 years. Andrew, thank you very, very much.